I'm going to call this video number two of my speaker build, even though I haven't started building the speakers yet. I did build a mock-up and it's on the floor behind me right there. I talked about the design briefly in video number one. If you haven't seen that video, there's a link in the description or you can catch it at the end of this video. And uh, I'm going to go into a bit more detail because like I said, I built a mock-up of what will be the woofer section for both speakers. And I wanted to do that because there's nothing like actually building the thing and trying it rather than relying 100% on the modeling software. Although I trust that, I would really like to have something to actually test on its own for how it works and in the room. Let's see how it performs in there. What you're looking at here is the design that I came up with. This is a spreadsheet program called Univox. And I've been using that for several years and completely trust what it gives me. And if you watch that first video, you'll see that I made a change and that was to lift the box tuning up to 26 Hertz. And that gives me an F3 of 23 Hertz approximately. And I did that for a number of reasons. First and foremost, I wanted to get the port length a bit shorter and also make the box volume a little bit smaller. And you can see that that's 95 liters. That's still a pretty big box. And I could go even smaller if I went with a seal design. I can get less than half that actually if I wanted to. But then I'd be giving up a lot of the bass response as well. So I'm going with the bigger box, invented instead. And like I talked about in that first video as well, this is isobaric. That means it's using two woofers acting as one. You can almost think of those very similar to two fans, one behind the other. Uh, you know, you want to get more wind blowing, you'll put one fan behind the other, or you could spread them out, right? But one fan right behind the other concentrates what's coming at you also, it takes up less space. And that's the objective with the isobaric arrangement. It actually doubles your power handling and it makes the box so that it can be half the size, which is a real benefit when you're working with woofers that have a big VAS number. I talked about making the port shorter and the primary reason for that is the resonance you'll get in a port that's longer. And you can see there's one here at around 450 Hertz. It's not really that bad. And also when you put a lot of fill in the box, well, that does a couple of things for you. It'll first of all, damp that port resonance to a certain extent, and that makes it less audible. So I don't think that's going to be audible at all. And also it actually makes the box seem bigger than it actually is. All that fill adds, I guess you could say it's equivalent to airspace. So what you do is you start off with a smaller box, put a lot of fill in there, and it's acting like a bigger box because of all that fill. So that's the projected response and how it's supposed to work according to the software. But I built a mock-up very quickly yesterday using scrap plywood. The very first thing I did was I stacked the woofers on top of each other to determine how far apart they need to be so that the woofer that's on the back won't be hitting the magnet on the woofer on the front when they're operating. You don't want that to be happening. That would be bad. And I already measured the excursion or the stroke of these woofers to see how much actual space I need to allow for that. So that comes in handy as well. The box is made from every kind of scrap sheet goods that I could find. And that includes some half inch plywood left over from doing this room down here. And the thing that took the most time was building the chamber that goes between the two woofers that has to be sealed. And it also has to be as small as possible to minimize the volume inside, like between the woofer cones. Uh, that makes it more effective. That makes the coupling between the woofers more like stronger. So I built it octagonally and cut out the pieces and got it all glued up and sealed together. And then I could mount the woofer on the inside of that and start building a box around it. And like I said, every kind of scrap I could find, I got black melamine and three quarter inch plywood salvage from a shop cabinet that I recently took apart. It's not pretty, but I got it done. And I wanted to make this as simple as possible. So the port is right in the corner, just, you know, fasten two pieces of plywood together, 
to make an L shape and stuck it in there. Those are the right length that I need for the port, which is just a bit more than 12 inches. And when I got that done, before I put the bottom on, I brought it down here to the basement. A little bit easier to carry when it's not full like that. Also, I wanted to get some insulation and put inside there for the stuffing to have that heavy fill that shows in the modeling software. And then I could get the bottom put on, get it hooked up, and do some in-room measurements to see how it performs in here. And that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. The first one is actually the output from my receiver's the subwoofer output and that has a low pass filter built in regardless of what you set the crossover to which is kind of surprising to me i thought that that wouldn't be the case i figured if you set the receiver to full range it would be sending a full range signal to the sub as well but that's simply not the case it's cutting it off right there so what i did instead was i connected it directly to the source and that gave me the full range measurement that you see right here I should mention that all the measurements I'm taking here are shown with some smoothing applied. Otherwise, it just looks like an unholy mess. So with that out of the way, uh, the actual uh, in-room response, you could say, I moved on to measuring the sub itself, starting with the near field. And that's where you take the microphone and put it very close to the center of the woofer. And by doing that, you get the true response of the woofer in the box without any reflections. And you can see that here is that light blue trace showing the characteristic dip at the tuning frequency that you'll see with every vented box design. And here's the predicted response from Unibox. It's that thin black line that I'm tracing along right here. And for comparison, I've resized and overlaid the measurement onto that predicted plot. And you can see that they're very close, but the tuning is a little bit lower on the one that I built. I can change that by changing the length of the port or the volume of the box or a combination of both if I need to. Right now it's looking pretty good and more importantly it's sounding accurate as well. Then I measured the port and you can see that happening here. Basically the same principle where you have the microphone very close to the port. And once again it's that light blue trace and that's humped up at the tuning frequency. Once again, we'll look at the simulation and you can see it's that light blue trace, coincidentally. And here's the actual measurement scaled down and overlaid for comparison. These actually line up really well. So now that I have the mock-up built, I can actually use it in the room to see how it performs. And so far, so good. I've had a couple of nights listening to it and it sounds pretty good. Nice deep bass. Uh, the Higher tuning at 26 hertz certainly doesn't sound like a compromise. I'm still digging deep and it sounds really fast and accurate. So that's what you're looking for. You want, well, especially in a treated room, you want, you know, good, accurate, solid bass that doesn't struggle with what it's trying to put out. And this seems to be doing the job. So from here, I can do a better job of designing the subs for the main speakers and I'll actually start building them soon. So we'll see some actual building <laughs> taking place rather than pictures and plots and measurements and all that boring stuff for some people, but you know, interesting for the rest of us.